Good morning and welcome to Christ Church. Our service this morning is the ministry of the Word from the Holy Eucharist Rite 2 and we begin on page 355 in the prayer book. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. The Collect of the Day is on page 232. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the Spirit to think and do those things that are right, that we, who cannot exist without you, may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture. <coughs> the first reading is from 1 Kings. At Horeb, the Mount of God, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go. Return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shabbat of Abil Meholah, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazel, Jehu, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Our psalm is found on page 709 in the book of Common Prayer, 709. It's Psalm 85, and we'll be reading verses 8 through 13. You want to do it responsibly by half verse? Okay. okay. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. For he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. 
Truly his salvation is very near to those who fear him. That his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth. And righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity. And our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him. And peace shall be a pathway for his feet. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the, Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now, and will be forever. forever. Amen. The next reading is from Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, Do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side of the lake, while he dismissed the crowd. After he dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves, because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We open the hearts of your church. Amen. Please be seated. Jesus walking on the water is a powerful image and is repeated again and again in art. Peter sinking in the water is slightly less often depicted in art, but if you have been cruising the internet this week, you may have seen it depicted in Lego, and I commend that piece of artwork to you. We are all Peter. Peter is not an exceptionally well-educated, 
or articulate individual, and yet God chooses to make great use of him. Why? Because Peter has absolute courage, far in excess of his competence. We all know, we have all been that person who is so confident that they step out in faith uh, despite the fact that they do not know what they are doing. This is what Jesus asks us to do every day. Whether you are a priest or a deacon or a layperson or a bishop, whether you have four degrees in theology from Oxford or whether you just read the Bible for the first time yesterday, whether you have an IQ in, in triple digits or in single digits, Jesus is asking us to have confidence beyond our competence. Why? Because we are not required or even asked to supply the competence. Jesus supplies the competence. All we are asked to supply is the confidence. Jesus was the one who walked on the water, and Jesus was the one who made it possible for Peter to walk on the water. The thing Jesus did not do, would not do, was get Peter out of the boat. Peter had to get Peter out of the boat. That courage, that confidence, that trust is what is required. Think of a child learning to swim, standing on the edge of the pool while their parent or their teacher stands in the water and calls to them, jump, jump. This is Peter. This is you and this is me. We must be willing. We need not be worthy, for none of us are. We supply the willingness. God supplies the worthiness. And if that doesn't comfort you in that moment of fear when it's time to get across the gunnel and out of the boat, nothing ever will. If you wait until you are ready, if you wait until you are competent, if you wait until you are sure, you will go into your grave waiting. Do, as Yoda would say, or do not do. There is no try. We must get out of the boat. It is important for us to remember that fear is not humility. It is humble to say, I do not know how to walk on the water. It is fearful to say, therefore, I will stay in the boat. It is confident, it is faithful to say, I cannot walk on the water, but I will get out of the boat anyway. That is our calling. Not just in ancient times on the Lake of Galilee, but now today, every day, when we are faced with a social lake that may be bottomless, when we are faced with an unknown factor like the coronavirus, when we are faced with something we would prefer not to face, like the profound illness or suffering of someone that we love, we must get out of the boat, open the door, pick up the phone, lay on hands, pray without knowing what the words are going to be. These are the acts of faith, and God honors these acts every single time by giving us what we need to accomplish his good work in the world. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed on page 358 in the prayer book. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, 
eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. The prayers of the people today are, and I ask you to focus with special intention on one of our flock and our friends, Ms. Linda Ely. Father Jim's wife has turned that corner that we will all turn and is making the journey toward her earthly end and her heavenly reunion. This is a, an especially hard time to walk the hospice walk with anyone. And if you are not familiar with the hospice movement, I ask you to scroll down and replay last night's reflection when I talked about it. It is a great blessing and a wonderful thing that we have as a resource in our time. Linda has been disabled for many months by her Alzheimer's disease. She is in the nursing home, which means that she cannot receive visitors because of the COVID infection. She herself has tested positive for COVID, but is also suffering from seizures and disabilities that have to do with the underlying Alzheimer's. We do not know if it is a matter of hours or days or months or perhaps even years. And this is a terrible uncertainty. And yet it is nevertheless certain that she will go and you will go and I will go. And the only thing that we who are a little behind her on the path can do right now is extend our prayers in love to her and to Jim and surround them with the great cloud of witnesses. We cannot perhaps be in person. Father Jim is not here this morning because he is self-isolating so that he can, when he is able to, go into the uh, isolation ward and have contact of a sorts with Linda, and we commend him for that self-sacrifice and risk that he is taking. But we can be there with her in spirit. You, many of you, have been touched by Linda's life and ministry, and I ask you not to imagine her lying in sickness and distress, but instead to call to mind the person that she was to you when she was herself, because she was a powerful servant of Jesus Christ and touched many lives through her health care ministry, through her church ministry, and through the ministry of loving presence that she brought everywhere she went. I ask you to remember that, Linda. Hold that image in your heart and pray, because that is the Linda who will wake up from her sickbed in the nearer presence of Christ. And that is the Linda who will be waiting for you and for me when we join that choir. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, give your servant peace and swift release. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. 
now let us pray in the words our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may that peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit send upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Mass is ended. Go to work. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah.